This is Ben Sorensen. I am the senior VP of uh, sales for North America for uh, InOcean. And I am happy to welcome you to this webinar about the uh, achieving sustainable and efficient building systems with Aruba and InOcean. Um, we have been working with uh, InOcean with the Aruba for uh, a couple of years now. And I'm very happy to have with me here the uh, uh, VP of IoT and Strategic Partnerships, Mike Tanifos, uh, who has been a key person behind this uh, cooperation. So uh, we look very much forward to hearing all the stuff that uh, Mike has to say. And I just also want to say that um, the intention is that we will have uh, 25 minutes of uh, going through the presentation, and then we'll have five minutes for Q&A afterwards and uh, there will also be a um, link sent to the presentation uh, tomorrow so you can see uh, the video and we also have on our inocean.com website uh, a uh, landing page with Aruba so if you go there you can actually go under one of the headers and find Aruba directly so um, look very much forward to this and with that said uh, welcome to you Mike Thank you very much, Bent, and uh, thank you for joining today. What we're talking about is smart building digital transformation and how to achieve sustainable and efficient automated building systems using a combination of Aruba infrastructure and an ocean devices. So what is a smart building? The term is thrown around a lot. Um, it has many meanings to different people. So for us, it's an environment that adapts to the needs of the users with minimal environmental impact. Um, workplaces change, building uses change, and the building should adapt to those uses, to the applications that are in use, and to the people in real time. So dynamically adapting fixtures and applications to the needs of the occupant requires intelligence within the facility. It needs to become effectively situationally aware of what's going on and how the space is being used. And when that happens, the space and the people in it can yield higher productivity, more creativity. It will lower life cycle costs by managing energy usage, and it can adapt to chain work trends as well. So situational awareness um, is what we call hyper-awareness. It's basically the conjunction of data that's generated from IoT devices, such as those from InOcean and the InOcean Alliance, combined with contextual information that's provided by the network that understands how the space is being used. So that can include um, location, identity, what applications are being used, even the security posture of the infrastructure. So the combination of the data coming off of the machines, for example, understanding occupancy and air quality together with what people are doing and where they're doing it creates a hyper-aware space inside of the building. The reason that a hyper-aware space is essential for a smart building is that it provides the context under which people are using the building. Um, where are they moving? Where are they gathering? In the event of a first responder incident, which parts of the structure are occupied and which are not? And the richer the set of data that we can get from IoT sensors and actuators, and the richer the set of contextual information we can get, then the more adaptive the facility becomes. So you can think of hyper-awareness as creating a Swiss Army knife, where the context and the data provide the body of the of the Swiss Army knife and the different utensils, the fork, the spoon, et cetera, that you plug in are based on the kinds of applications that are used and the kinds of sensors that are specific to that building. Hyper-awareness is really driven from the edge of a network because that's where the IoT data are generated by an ocean IoT devices. And that's also where contextual data like location and identity are created by Aruba's IT networks. The edge of the network is also where the majority of cyber breaches start. 
because of penetration into the network at the very edge. And so when we talk about creating uniform security from IO to CEO in an organization, it starts at the network edge and protecting the point of entry and exit of IoT data. The edge of the network is also where a process failure, like an air conditioning failure, can actually bring a company to a halt. And so ensuring that we have reliable uptime, reliable access to data at the edge becomes really essential in order to create and maintain a smart building. Challenges of a smart building include IoT security, uh, extending security all the way from the sensors and actuators to the applications, whether they be on site or in a cloud application like Azure IoT. It's also essential that it be easy to deploy and low cost to deploy. Wiring is anathema to many um, customers and it certainly impacts the cost of deployment and the time required for deployment. Um, and so moving to an all wireless infrastructure enables a smart building to become much more efficient and similar to deploy um, and to make ads, moves, and changes. Carbon footprint, or the green footprint of a building, very much at the top of mind for customers, both because of cost and because of a commitment to reduce carbon footprint uh, for the global good. And then finally, one of the challenges is vendor lock-in. Traditional automation systems end up locking customers into one source of supply as opposed to having a broader ecosystem of solutions from which to choose based on price or features. Let's talk about these in order. I like to talk about the internet of untrusted things. I have been involved with control networking and buildings since the early 1980s. And I know that the focus of manufacturers has traditionally been making sensors and actuators that work as reliably as possible for as long as possible. But the world is more complex today and ensuring the security of IoT devices is, not, uh, is no longer an option, it's mandatory. And so we have to ensure that we apply the highest standard of cybersecurity to IoT devices that may not have been designed to have it uh, built in initially. So actually on this subject of, of IoT security, Ben, let me pass the baton back to you for, for the next couple of slides. Yeah, sure, thanks. Yeah, so what we're seeing here is uh, the security aspect from the uh, Uber access point perspective. Uh, so uh, the access point acts as a tunnel for the sensor data, right? So what you're seeing here is a USB with the Notion protocol on it. And that one receives all the uh, sense, all the data from the sensors that you see below here, and it uh, forwards it uh, to the access point uh, without any kind of payload processing. And then the access point receives the data and it runs a small lightweight application that encapsulate the data and forward it uh, over a secure link to the uh, IOTC, the Notion IoT connector. Uh, which you see in the middle here, and again in an unprocessed form. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, the Aruba access point and the IOTC uh, communicate over a secure link, uh, it's a web socket where they're using username and password. And uh, once received, the IOTC uh, processes the telegram data uh, in different steps. Uh, that's not mentioned here, but you, uh, it will include a deduplication. So in some cases, because you can have just one IOTC in, uh, in several floors from several uh, access points, it could get the same telegram twice. So what it does is it makes sure that it only forward one of those telegrams to the application. And then it does the uh, uh, security processing where it, uh, the telegram is decrypted and then authenticated. And uh, it makes sure, again, that it hasn't been received previously. And then it sends it uh, uh, forward in uh, what you see here between the uh, here. It sends it in an MQTT format, uh, in a JSON format, so that it can be used by a third-party app as an example. If we, uh, if, if we go to the, thank you, to this one. Uh, then what you see here is more, uh, it's kind of the same, but seen from the uh, data uh, perspective. 
where you see the uh, in ocean IoT sensors sending the data uh, in a uh, secure, it can be in a secure form to the uh, Ruba access point. And um, then uh, the access point forwards that uh, again to the uh, in ocean IoTC connector. And uh, it, super important again to stress that it's done through a secure web socket. Um, and uh, there's authentication between the IOTC and the uh, and the Aruba access point. So in that way, it is as secure as you could uh, possibly get it, basically. Uh, and you see again that it's for, uh, then forwarded uh, in JSON form through MQTT. Thanks very much, Ben. So basically what we're seeing here is that there is some inherent security built into the Inotion protocol and those secure payloads are passed through the secure Aruba infrastructure, which actually is available up to classify top secret. So we have um, security, two layers of security, one on the payloads themselves, and the other is on the method by which the data are traversed through the network. Aruba relies on a zero trust infrastructure. We don't trust the data, we don't trust the users, we don't trust the devices, we don't trust anything in a zero trust infrastructure. Everything has to be um, uh, have it, its identity asserted, the appropriate role assigned to the device telling the network what it is allowed to do. And we also use and follow a micro segmentation process where we can secure the data all the way from the point of entry into the network through the local area network, through the wide area network, and even land it in a cloud all over secure tunnels from end to end that meet the highest standards of, of IT security. The infrastructure that allows this to happen is called the Edge Services Platform, the Aruba ESP. And there are three elements to it. One is the unified infrastructure, this is the method by which the data are brought into the uh, Aruba infrastructure. In the case of an ocean, it's brought in through a USB adapter, 800 or 900 megahertz USB adapter. Um, in the case, in the in the case of the um, uh, other solutions, we also support BLE and 802.15.4 communications. That then passes through the edge to cloud security. This is the zero trust infrastructure that includes network policy management uh, encryption to whatever level of standard the customer wishes us to all the way up to classify top secret and common criteria validated. Um, we also integrate with more than 170 other security solutions. So next gen firewalls, EMS, SIEM systems, cloud-based security like Zscaler, et cetera. And then, there's AI ops, which is the application of machine learning to understand what's going on in the infrastructure. And this includes the ability to broadcast transactions to the end IoT application um, and receive responses back to determine, is the application being responsive? Are there any latency or jitter? So in addition to providing a secure tunnel, we can also ensure the uptime of the infrastructure. And if we start seeing degradation anywhere in the platform, locally over the wide area network or in cloud or data center based applications, we can flag them become, before they become impactful in order to keep the system running well. Um, we hear over and over again from chief information security officers that they don't want any gateways in their infrastructure. Hardware gateways are expensive, they have or require ongoing maintenance, and they present both a security and a connectivity challenge uh, for organizations. Uh, connectivity challenge is sometimes they provide a way of bypassing existing security infrastructure, but also um, penetration testing and other tests of gateways have shown uh, over and over again that IoT gateways have security vulnerabilities that are simply not acceptable. So by being able to pull the data directly into the Aruba access point, we're able to eliminate the need for gateways. We also simplify the deployment of the infrastructure because you don't need a new dedicated IoT um, cabling system or infrastructure. Simply 
plug the Inocean 800 or 900 megahertz adapter into the Aruba infrastructure and the uh, access point will authenticate the adapter and set up the secure tunnel to the target application and away you go. And so this is an ideal way for um, existing or new Aruba deployments to add IoT to the infrastructure at minimal cost and minimal labor required to do it. Today, there are literally tens of millions of Aruba access points on the market that could support the Anocean adapter. So there's a huge installed base that um, simplify the cost of adding it. If you look at the cost of uh, the lifecycle cost of a network, the connectivity infrastructure is typically about 33%. By being able to use wireless communication to the sensors and existing Aruba infrastructure, you're able to significantly lower the cost of the uh, typical overlay uh, deployment. Jump here to the next slide. So the integrated solution with an access point saves about 89% of the connectivity cost. You've eliminated the need for gateways um, and other infrastructure, which has considerable hardware savings, but even greater than that are the connectivity and cabling savings. When you add on to this, the fact that most Inocean devices use energy harvesting, the savings are even greater because there's no battery replacement cost that's involved. Oops. There we go. So the savings come from cabling, they come from hardware, and they come from the life cycle cost of eliminating the need for ladder climbs and truck rolls to replace batteries um, inside of the devices. The net result of using energy saving is a reduced carbon footprint, not only from the consumption of energy, but also from landfills related to the disposal of batteries. So the use of energy harvesting is ideal for retrofit because you can use existing light sources like room lighting or mechanical or kinetic energy in order to power the Inocean devices. And so um, you take advantage of energy that's already present and you eliminate the need to um, regularly replace batteries every two years or three years and, and dispose of those uh, power sources. Energy harvesting devices are available in a very broad range of devices from heating valves and submetering systems, uh, door open, door close, or cabinet open and close, window status, presence detection, uh, light switching. I think the light switching is one that generally really opens eyes because there's a piezo crystal inside of the switch and depressing the on switch generates the energy to run the radio. And it means that light switching can be moved wherever it's needed. So during retrofits of a site where walls might be moved or cubicles might be moved, the light switch can move with it with no additional wiring required. And again, no energy sources required. The switch is completely self-contained. So it also changes the cost of ads, moves and changes to a site relative to uh, a standard hardwire AC mains uh, deployment of a lighting system. So here's an example of a temperature monitoring application. In this case, we have a, a cabinet in the, where we might need to monitor temperature, for example, of either um, vaccines and medication. It could be uh, food compliance, which is uh, mandatory in many parts of the world. Um, the uh, the way in which this temperature monitoring is set up is a USB adapter is plugged into the Aruba AP temperature and ocean temperature sensors from either an ocean or the an ocean alliance members are installed. Data communicates over 800 or 900 megahertz to the AP. It's then um, tunneled over the secure smart tunnel to the monitoring system application. Nothing else required in this case other than the USB adapter and the temperature sensor. And if you look at a typical building deployment, Aruba access points are spaced about every 12 meters for high quality voice communication. So on a 20,000 to 25,000 square foot floor, 
you might need only two to four USB adapters to cover the entire floor. There'll be many, many more access points on that floor, but you only need two to four AP, um, USB adapters because the 800 and 900 megahertz propagation characteristics are so good through building construction materials. So temperature sensor available from multiple sources, um, which brings us to the point about vendor lock-in. The Inocean Alliance has more than 400 different members. It's basically a who's who of vendors that are manufacturing IoT sensors and actuators on the market. So customers have a choice of form factor, design, functionality, as well as multiple sources of um, procurement for the equipment. It's not to say that you can't pick your favorite vendor and always use it, but you do know that you have the choice of, of vendors. And so you eliminate the traditional vendor lock-in. And if you look at a traditional smart building deployment, most of the HVAC companies that do these deployments don't make money on the initial deployment. They make money on after sales and service. And so that means customers of these sites are um, basically locked into high cost parts over the life of the system. And the uh, an ocean design eliminates that kind of vendor lock-in and gives much more freedom and uh, cost reduction. So together, Aruba and Inocean are driving smart building digital transformation. We are enhancing the security of IoT to a level that's never been achieved before by taking the highest best-in-class IoT um, communications and applying the best-in-class IT security to it, uh, not only locally, but all the way over wide area networks, MPLS, internet, cellular networks, SATCOM networks, to the target application. We're making the deployment costs minimal because you can use existing infrastructure to carry the IoT data, and we're providing the flexibility for you to pick when uh, you deploy the system. It doesn't have to be at the time that the building is originally constructed. It can be retrofit. And also the variety of devices from which you have uh, you can choose. The solution is green, uses energy harvesting and no batteries to install or dis dispose of. It's simple to deploy because of wireless and the 800, 900 megahertz has great propagation characteristics and building. And you have a wide variety of sensing and control. Many of our customers that are deploying in Ocean are led by the IT department and facilities may not have originally told them when the IT infrastructure was installed that they will one day want to do leak detection, lighting control, HVAC, refrigeration monitoring, uh, door open, close monitoring. And it doesn't matter because once the Aruba infrastructure is in and the Inocean adapter is plugged in, they are free to pick whatever kinds of devices they want and add them to the system. And today there are more than 5,000 different devices in the Inocean Alliance ecosystem. So a huge range of choices that don't require knowing in advance what's going to be deployed and where it needs to go. And with that, Bent, uh, we can turn over to uh, Q&A. Thank you very much, Greg. That was a fantastic uh, presentation. And uh, as you heard, tens of millions of access points from Aruba, uh, stable in this industry, uh, 5,000 5, uh, roughly products from Inocean and the new ones coming by the day, literally. Uh, so really, really good uh, combination uh, possibilities here. Um, so we do have some uh, questions and uh, I'm gonna skip right to it. So the first one is, um, is asking, customers are increasingly insisting on the use of open standards versus proprietary solution. How does the joint solution, how does this joint solution address this requirement? So that, that's an easy answer because an ocean is an ISO standard. So the use of the an ocean uh, protocol and devices means that you're building it on an ISO standard. And the Aruba infrastructure itself is all based on open IT standards, uh, ethernet, Wi-Fi, 
um, et cetera, WebSocket uh, security infrastructure we use, a dot one x authentication, et cetera. So both sides, the IoT and the IT side, are both based on open standards. That's right, thank you. Um, there's another one asking, can existing Aruba customers retrofit a Notion-based solutions without ripping and replacing their Aruba gear? That's a great question. Aruba has been shipping access points with USB ports on them since roughly 2007. So the vast majority of Aruba APs that are out there um, have USB ports on them into which the Inotion USB adapter can be plugged. And that means that the system can be retrofit into existing Aruba deployments uh, almost universally without any rip and replace. Okay, perfect. Um, there's uh, another one. How can a building owner ensure that a smart building solution using an ocean and Aruba gear uh, is always operating in an optimal way? Well, one of the ways to do that is through our AI ops. We have a product called UXI, which broadcasts synthetic transactions. Uh, or b basically uh, as if it was acting like an IoT system uh, into the IoT application. So it traverses the entire network from end to end to the target application and back. And if there's any issue with the servers, with the application, with latency or jitter uh, on the communication path or in the cloud or data center, it will be detected and identified so it can be remediated before it becomes problematic. So not only do we have a way of connecting and protecting the IoT data, we can also ensure that uptime is maximized and mean time to repair is, is minimized because we can identify the source of problems. Thank you. Uh, we also have a good question here. Uh, where is device management handled? So the Anocean device management is handled uh, within the Anocean ecosystem. Uh, sensors are configured and managed um, using standardized tools uh, to perform those functions. So the uh, facilities or the team that's responsible for the IoT sensors uh, manages those sensors. The um, IT infrastructure is managed by IT. So basically, um, the division of labor is the same as it is today. It just all happens to be running over one common infrastructure. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I think it's also worth mentioning a little bit going back to the, to the slides that I commented on on the security part that you know some people would ask, but can you use the uh, Inotion uh, as an entry point to potentially uh, hack the Aruba access point, right? And that is absolutely not possible due to all the security features that we showed before. Um, that's right. So the, the way in which that's done is that the Inotion adapter, first of all, you can't plug anything into the USB port um, until it's been authenticated. So once we validate that it's a legitimate Inotion USB adapter, a secure tunnel is established right from the entry point of the uh, uh, of the USB adapter all the way through the infrastructure, so there's there's no probing, there's no access to any internal Aruba operating systems or other memory or other components that's accessible via uh, the IoT devices, which is what makes this so secure for customers. That's why it's a preferred solution versus putting. Um, a gateway or other devices that have security vulnerabilities in them into the IT infrastructure. Yep. We have one minute left, but I have two very quick uh, or two questions with some quick answers. So I'm going to try and do them and uh, be, before we say goodbye. So the first one is, is the same USB adapter for every sensor. Uh, so in other words, do you use uh, the same adapter to talk to all the different devices, whether temperature sensors, light switch, et cetera? Yes, the answer is yes. One adapter for exactly. all of them. Yeah, and and we can also say that the, the standard is built on on, on different uh, protocols. 
that define how different devices speak together. And it's all in the USB. It has all the uh, gateway functionalities, so it can de you know detect what type of device it's talking to. Last one is uh, what Aruba uh, models uh, does the uh, USB adapter work with? Great one. So it works with virtually every single Aruba indoor Aruba access point, except for the very, very entry models, which don't have USB ports. Um, so instant on, uh, sorry, Aruba Instant, Aruba controller-based solutions um, all support the USB adapter. Um, you can look Perfect. on the data sheet if you if you are an existing Aruba customer. You can look on the data sheet for the unit, or you can reach out to your local salesperson to find out if your unit has a USB adapter. Normally, you can just see it right on the side of the unit. Perfect. And in general, I would also encourage anybody who's got questions on the Notion side, they're very welcome to contact us and we'll be happy to answer them.